Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be evaluating an infinite series. We have 4 over 5 plus 9 over 25 plus 16 over 125 and so on and so forth. This is an infinite series, an infinite sum, which can be evaluated. By the way, it converges and you can check it out. But this is how the series proceeds. The numerators are perfect squares. 2 squared, 3 squared, 4 squared, and so on and so forth. Denominators are powers of 5, 5 to the 1st, 5 to the 2nd, 5 to the 3rd. You get the idea? So that's how the series is made. Now we're going to go ahead and find this sum. It's a numerical value. But to be able to do that, we're going to be looking at something variable first. Because, because the powers are in the denominator, in other words, the denominators are powers of 5, we can also consider the following. We are multiplying perfect squares by powers of 1 over 5, right? So kind of like this. You can write this as 4 So you can write this as 4 times 1 over 5 plus 9 times 1 over 5 squared plus 16 times 1 over 5 to the third power, so on and so forth. You get the idea? We could even turn this into the sigma notation, which might be helpful most of the time. But I'm going to use a different approach. Obviously, there's more than one way to do it. And let me know if you know of any good methods or alternatives always feel free to let us know in the comment section down below. Great, so let's go ahead and start with a geometric series, an infinite geometric series. Uh, most of the time people use R, but since uh, I'm going to do a little bit of calculus here, not too much, but just tiny bit with differentiation, I want to stick to X as my variable. So I'm going to write it like a function. You could also use R, that's perfectly fine. But guess what? I'm going to use x, okay? So, whenever you have a sum like this, 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed plus x to the fourth, you get the idea all powers of x, increasing powers of x, and this goes on forever. If x meets certain criteria, then this sum can be evaluated. In other words, the series converge. And that criteria or criterion is x needs to be between negative 1 and 1, okay? In other words, like a fraction, 1 half, 1 third, 1 fifth. So our values here are going to work. That's why it converges. But this is equivalent to 1 over 1 minus x. And for the cases that this converges, this can easily be proven. You can go ahead and factor out an x here. And then notice that this expression contains itself. So if you called it s, this would also be s and solve for s. You're going to get the exact same thing. You get the idea? Very easy to prove. So, but that's just the beginning of the story. We have a story to tell you, okay? So 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed. I'm going to write it one more time because I'm going to apply a little bit of focus pocus. I mean calculus. Kind of similar to focus pocus, okay? But it has rules. So we're going to go ahead and differentiate both sides. And when we do, we get something interesting. For example, what's the derivative of 1? 0. What's the derivative of x? 1. I'm going to put that here. So I'm going to shift the terms so that constants are under constants, the x's are under x's, so on and so forth. Plus, what's the derivative of x squared? 2x. The derivative of x cubed? 3x squared. You get the idea? The power rule says, OK, bring down the power and reduce the power by 1. And with integration, which is the opposite, we do the opposite. Make sense? So calculus in that sense is fairly easy. Of course, there are complications, but in most of the time, it's a bunch of rules. And then we get the 4x to the third, so on and so forth. Okay, let's just leave it at that. But you also have to differentiate the right-hand side, right? You need to do the same thing to both sides. So when you differentiate 1 over 1 minus x, by the way, you can write this as 1 minus x to the power of negative 1 and use the power rule with negative 1. 
you're going to bring the negative 1 to the front, reduce it, but that will turn into a fraction, so on and so forth. So to keep a long story short, the derivative will be 1 over 1 minus x quantity squared. You get that? Or just memorize it. I did. So we're going to be differentiating one more time. And this time when we differentiate 2x, it's going to give us 2. The derivative of 3x squared is 6x. Notice how I'm aligning them. And then we have 4x cubed, which gives us 12x squared. And then, of course, you're supposed to have 5x to the fourth here. And that would give you 20x to the third, so on and so forth. I think this is good enough. But what do you get on the right-hand side? If you differentiate this, you're going to have 1 minus x to the power negative 2, which you'll bring to the front. And then that'll divide it. Um, that'll be so kind of like this. Oh, by the way, I forgot to say something about this. Also multiply by the derivative of 1 minus x, which is negative 1. That's why you don't see a negative sign. And you won't see a negative sign. Here. Obviously, if x is positive, all the terms are going to be positive, and their sum is also going to be positive. Anyways, so this should be 2 over 1 minus x to the power 3. Now, I think I'm going to stop at this point. Like Andrew Weil said, I think I'll stop here. So we're going to go ahead and just add these. And you might be thinking, like, why did you keep differentiating? You'll see in a little bit why, but you may not know why this works, right? Because when I came up with the problem, I did this and I came up with the problem, but reversing it is hard because it's kind of reverse engineering. But is there another way to do it? Probably. And we're also going to check the results from Wolfram Alpha. What do you think? Do you think Wolfram Alpha, when prompted with a numerical sum, can evaluate this series? Anyway, so let's go ahead and add them column by column. What I mean by that is we have the constants here, right? That's why I aligned them. It's important. 1 plus 1 plus 2 is 4. And then this gives us 9x. And then this gives us 15 plus 1, 16x squared. And then 25 plus x cubed, so on and so forth. Uh-oh. What did we get? We got the series. Yay. Oh, not really. Are you serious? Well, almost there. We're almost there. But what is this equal to? It's equal to the sum of three things. 1 over 1 minus x plus 1 over 1 minus x quantity squared plus 2 over 1 minus x quantity cubed. Uh-oh. That can be done easily, but what about the left-hand side? Here's where the magic begins. As if we didn't have magic before, right? We're going to replace x with 1 over 5. Why? Because it's, been, it's between negative 1 and 1. So our series still converges, not converge, converges. So we can go ahead and do that. And if we plug in x everywhere, we're going to get 4 plus 9 times 1 over 5, which is 9 over 5, and then 16 over 25, and then 25 over... Wait, I think I messed up somewhere, did I? Well, uh, it should be, hold on a sec. Let me go back and check this. Oh, one, six, 16 over 125. Oh, okay. What? All right. So, never mind. Uh, I messed up. I think, hmm. Oh, yes. I know what we're going to do. We're not just going to plug in 1 over 5. Of course, we have to do a little bit more work. And here's how it works. We're going to go ahead and... Since our first term needs to be 4 over 5, we should have an x here. Make sense? So we're going to multiply everything by x. So that's going to give us 4x plus 9x squared. This was the trick that I was missing. 16x cubed, so on and so forth. And of course, we're going to have an x, giant x in the front, which I can take care of later. Because first, I'm planning on making a common denominator. All right? So let's go ahead and do this and see if we can get to the answer. Now I can go ahead and replace x with 1 over 5 because now it's going to work, right? When I replace x with 1 over 5, I'm going to get 4 over 5 plus 9 over 25 plus 16 over 125. Of course, the next term is going to give us 25 over 625, which is going to simplify, but that's okay. You make sure you get the pattern. And on the right-hand side, we can go ahead and replace x with 1 over 5. So this is going to give us 1 over 5. And then 1 minus 1 over 5 is going to be 4 over 5, but you can write it as 5 over 4. And this will be 1 minus 1 over 5 squared, which is 4 over 5 squared, which is 16 over 25, but you can write it as 25 over 16. So the common denominator will change, obviously. And then plus 
we have the 1 minus 1 over 5, which is 4 over 5 cubed, and that would be, when flipped, uh, 125 over 64. Get the idea? That's a finite sum, of course. The left-hand side is infinite, the right-hand side is finite. Infinite equals a finite. Very interesting, right? So, what are, what are we supposed to do? Make a common denominator and simplify this. 5 times 16, that's 80. And then 25 times 4 is 100. And 125 times 1 is the same. Divide by 64. Uh, we, we're we're going to be able to divide everything by 5, but this gives us 200, 305. And then over 64 divided by 5, that should be 61 over 64. If I did not make any mistakes, let's go ahead and check the result from Wolfram Alpha, and we're gonna see if I made any mistakes. If I did, that's for you to find out. Uh-oh, looks like I messed up. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.